Hey folks, Mr. Tully. I told you I'd try to bring you some more repair work that I'm doing. I'm not going to, of course, bring you all of it, but, you know, some of it, some of the easier stuff. Um, this is actually from the same customer as the last one that I showed you, which is awesome. I love collectors because they, they know quality work and they know who's going to do it the right way for them. Um, this holster is for a Walther PPK and what happened is somebody moved this up. So they moved it from down here, they moved it up here. Um, it's a pretty simple adjustment to move it back down where it belongs. It's really a shame that somebody did that though. Because um, they made extra holes and it kind of ruins the uh, kind of ruins the value of the holster. I mean to an extent not necessarily ruins it but it decreases the value of it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove it he'll do all the uh, restoration on the holster himself um, I'm just gonna take care of moving the strap back down here where it belongs and it kinda changes it it puts it at a little bit of an angle too um, so that's what I'm gonna do and then I'll send this back with the other one but the one thing that I have with this is the thread, and you probably won't can't make it out on the camera, and I don't ever expect you to. The thread is much smaller on this. It's not not as heavy as what would be on the Luger holsters. So I need a lighter thread. Here's a little trick. I picked this up from uh, Don Gonzalez's channel, and I don't think he knows that I picked it up from him. But I notice in his uh, knife that he uses. This is just a strap cutter blade, but in your strap cutter, you tend not to use the ends of the blade. So what I do, and I'm sure he does the same thing, is I take my strap cutter blade and I put it in my X-Acto knife. Because in your strap cutter, you use the middle of the blade, not the end. They work great in the end of the blade. They're really flex nice. So when you're cutting out leather, they're great. They also work pretty good when you gotta cut these threads. I've got my die, my uh, thread dyed here and uh, I need to get this off. Now I gotta use different needles. This is where I get my needles from. It's just RM Leather Supply. They, you can find them on Amazon or go straight to their website and buy stuff. So, uh, but this takes a little smaller needle. This I have a, this is a John James 004. I only use John James needles. I don't break them. I've got the, the 004, a 002, and a double zero, um, which is a pretty stout needle. <laughs> I don't even have them out. I have to dig those out of the bin. Um, but anyway, so I need to cut this. I need to cut these threads. And normally, if I can get to the back side, that's where I like to do it. Um, sometimes it's just not possible to do it back here. without uh, causing some damage but sometimes this is a really most awls don't have a very sharp point on them and that's intentional you don't really want them that way this particular one has a very sharp point on it and usually I can get under a thread like that just like that and hopefully I can continue to do that and just get under the thread because that's not I'm not digging into the leather that way uh, what I need to do is I got my light here this light <laughs> this is really cool light I need to get one of those magnifying lights again I had one before looks like they just used a white thread on here and I know when he goes to dye it or clean up the holster it's going to change the color of the thread again which is okay because that will because uh, I think I got a couple of dark spots in there you probably won't even notice it once it's done but getting in here is not the easiest thing to do yeah, it broke so this is the plan that I don't like to do Vintage leather 
can mark up really easy. And these blades also are really thin. So it's a little easier to get in here to do it this way. Just keep in mind that you don't want to... Don't get crazy. This is going to be exposed now. So behind here is going to be exposed once I move it down. So I really want to be extra, extra careful. Very carefully want to go after this. Can't stress that enough. There we go. Now you can see there's dirt under there. I'd know if I scuffed that leather because it'd be marked right in that dirt. You would know it. I cleaned that up as best I could down there. I thought I turned the camera on and I didn't apparently. Um, I started with a did a binding stitch here and when I come back and do the other side that I'll do another stitch over there. Um, but now I'm just kind of the regular old saddle stitch. And especially in a situation like this you want to do everything identical. And as I looked at this it's almost like they had just two different locations for this uh, They had stitch holes made for two different locations for this strap. So I have to wonder. But I just, I can't say for sure. I just can't say for sure. I mean, it does definitely look like it needs to come down farther on here, but... I've never seen this particular style of holster. They've always been a little bit different than this. So, it's easy to work on, thank God. This is one of those situations where I had to defer to my customer's judgment because he is the collector. I couldn't find anything online on this particular holster either, so... A lot of times when, I'll, when I finish here, I'll go under a thread and pull it tight again. And then I'll go with both needles, I'll go just sneak it under one. Just kind of gives me a nice little place to rest everything, I guess. Um, and then I'll tie a square knot, which is just a uh, two overhand knots. One's a left over right. And the other one is the other way, a right over left. So it's they're pretty simple. <laughs> My granddad taught me how to make one when I was a wee little tad. The square knot will never come done come undone. And that's pretty much pretty much how these things are done anyway. You can just pretty much slip them right down close and with that loop under the previous thread, it's not going to come undone. Now he's going to have to work this holster a bit to get that to come back down. And it's just got to come a little bit. But he's going to have to take care of that when he conditions it and stuff. I'm not going to leave it hooked there. And hopefully that's the way it is because it, 
it doesn't look like it was ever stitched there to be honest but that is what he asked for I'm gonna get a hold of a friend of mine who's also a collector um, there it is all finished like I said I don't I don't <laughs> The way the needle was going through that hole, I don't know that there's ever been a needle there through it before. So I can't, I honestly don't think that's ever been there before. But all the holes line up. And that could be, you know, purely machine punch the holes and punch the hole in the strap, punch the hole in the leather, and it might have done both spots at the same time. I don't know. I'm going to try to do a little more research and see what I can find. Um, got the thread color, kind of a happy medium. There's, it's different colors in different spots. So I like to think I got it at a happy medium spot. Um, other than that, I think she's ready to go down the road. It's, uh, you know, once I close that, it, it kind of pulls everything a little bit, which is, is fine. It's normal, but it kind of pulls it in a way that I'm not going to ship it that way until he's got time to you know condition the leather so it's a little more supple it's really not bad it's actually in pretty good shape um, normally when I do a project like this and I'm doing the the uh, restoration on it you know some of the cracking and stuff I'll leave some of it um, like up on top here the you see the cracking and stuff there that's normal that's gonna be there and some of the scratches and stuff I don't touch any of that um, I just try to clean everything and really condition the leather really well so it's it, it maintains its uh, integrity over the you know over the time to come if it's a new holster or something that's just kind of beat up and ugly looking if it's a new holster you know um, and I've got a couple around here that have been pretty beat up so maybe I'll do a little restoration video on something like that but a holster like this that belongs to a firearm that's a vintage firearm and it's a vintage hol holster It'll retain more value if you leave it in this condition, especially if it's a, if it saw combat. So you want to leave it that way. Um, so I'm not going to touch it. I'll let him do. He'll you know do what he does with it, and uh, that'll be it. So I'm going to get this ready to go down the road, and uh, hopefully all goes well when he cleans it. And that'll be the end of this video. You all stay safe. God bless. Another Walther PPK holster in the books.